Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Today we got a lot of cool things to talk about. I mean, that's why we have Hot News, is to talk about the cool things. But we're gonna do that after I tell you about today's video sponsor, privacy.com. Yes, my friends, if you're looking to buy things on the internet, you don't use the same password at every website, so why would you use the same card number at every website? It makes no sense. Trying to buy something from Amazon and you're trying to buy something from Spotify, don't use the same card. That's where privacy.com comes in. You go there, you set up your bank account, you get personalized cards for each site, you can set limits on each card that can be monthly or one-time use, and that way you can make sure that you're safe and if let's say a shady website that you're buying from gets hacked well then you're protected and you'll know about the hack before they do because you can see that your card has been tried to be charged but it got denied and if you go to privacy.com forward slash ufd at the video description you'll save five dollars off your first purchase with them yes my friends that's five dollars in free money free cash, okay? So check it out, privacy.com forward slash UFD and save $5 off on your first purchase with them. They're super secure, they keep you secure, and it gives you hope for the future. You know what gives me hope for the future though? Intel, because they have some interesting stuff going on with their open source Linux team, specifically one of their members who's dedicated to the Linux graphics department, Francisco Yerez, about Gen 12 graphics, which is Project Z, the one that we're expecting in 2020, stating that Gen 12 is planned to include one of the most in-depth reworks of the Intel EU ISA since the original i965. That that is some crazy old architecture that they're talking about as far as completely reworking it. That is technically the fourth generation of their integrated graphics, which goes all the way back to the days before Nahalem. The days before Nahalem were the last time they were saying that this is gonna be a major rework. So Gen 12 is the largest rework to come in over a decade to Intel's uh, design architecture of their instruction set. Kinda, sort of, almost like how it, AMD announced RDNA versus their previous GCN architecture, RDNA being something that's slightly different. It's not a complete rework of the ISA, it's actually just a little bit here and there, but Intel completely were reworking the ISA, saying that the encoding of almost every instruction field, hardware opcode and register type need to be updated in this merge request, but probably the most invasive change is the removal of the register scoreboard logic from the hardware, which means that the EU will no longer guarantee data coherency between register reads and writes. That's a whole bunch of technical details, but Gen 12 graphics becoming something that's actually quite crazy for Intel. They're putting a lot of effort into this. Obviously, Raja Kadori coming over from AMD means that they have his expertise and they're I mean, they've made tons of acquisitions of AMD's graphics department to make this happen, which depending on your perspective is either a good or a bad thing. But the key thing is Intel's actually heavily investing in this and we're getting more details as time goes on. It looks like actually Linux drivers are the best way to find out what in the heck's happening. That's how we know about Navi's workstation GPUs like we talked about in a previous Hot News episode, as well as a few other things that have come in the pipeline, Linux. That's where you're gonna discover the new graphics cards, my friends. It truly is where you should be. So those are Intel's plans for their upcoming generation of graphics cards, but AMD also updated their roadmap for 2020, giving us a further indication of what we should be expecting, which includes Zen, three seven nanometers plus. They're actually complete with that on the design. They're expecting that to launch in 2020. And then also RDNA two will likely launch on seven nanometer plus in 2020 as well. And given the architectural improvements that Apple has been seeing on their A3 Bionic chip up to 18% faster in single core performance over their A12 Bionic chip. If that's actually due to the uh, difference in uh, processing nodes, then it looks like AMD actually might have something good on their hands for Zen 3 and the second generation of Navi cards as well, or they might call them something different than Navi. We'll have to wait and see what the, the code name is going to be, but, Apple being the first on TSMC seven nanometer plus EUV lithography bodes really well for AMD expanding to that next year as well. But we can't talk about AMD's next generation with also, without also fixing this generation of stuff because in case you aren't familiar, the Zen 2 processors that have come out, Ryzen 3000, there's been a whole controversy about how they're not hitting their advertised boost clock speeds. AMD said that was a BIOS issue. They've done since fixed it. And then yes, 
yesterday they rolled out the AGESA ABAFIX for their processors in front. And what I'm gathering from watching a few different places here and there and reading different uh, reviews of it, it does seem to fix the boost clock issue of the CPUs. It barely brings any extra performance because AMD was still delivering on that and most of the performance came from the better IPC, not from the clock speed. It's still nice to have what was advertised even if you didn't get it when it first launched. But performance wise, as I mentioned, this actually isn't a huge deal. It's just for the people who were missing those extra 100 or 200 megahertz and they really wanted them. But speaking of desire, let's talk about abstract art for a while. Salvador Dali, apparently is going to be the inspiration for AMD's next generation of APUs besides the Renoir APUs that have already been discussed because we're actually finding out in Linux drivers that there is potentially a new AMD APU class called Dolly. It's not clear what this is going to be, especially since Renoir is supposed to be Zen 2 CPUs with Vega graphics. Maybe, potentially, this is me spitballing, Dolly is actually going to be Zen plus CPU with Navi graphics. And they're just gonna complicate everything and hurt everybody and make it all a cry fest. I'm crying. But who's not crying is the owners of Polaris cards because with the latest Adrenaline 19.92 update, you can now take advantage of Radeon image sharpening, which is AMD's response to Nvidia's DLSS because it made everything soft. AMD was like, people like to actually see things that aren't coded in Vaseline. So they released Radeon image sharpening and then Nvidia was like, huh, Okay, we'll do that too with their Gamescom update. But now, instead of just rolling it out to the newest cards, AMD's rolling it out to Polaris cards, which is the RX 400 and 500 series. And then more AMD graphics card news. The Radeon 5700 XT Tai Chi X from ASRock has been launched. So you can enjoy that beauty if you so want. And then Corsair is unleashing their highest, fastest RAM that they could possibly do, the Vengeance LPX 4866 megahertz RAM for, for whatever you could possibly need that for, now retail. Why, why do you need almost five gigahertz retail? I don't understand, but it's there. Corsair leading the pack with that. But speaking of RAM, apparently China is going to be unveiling and rolling out their next fabrication facility for DRAM in 2021. So Chinese RAM could be an introduction to the market and not just necessarily what we have now, but more competitors. Yay! Speaking of China though, I cannot understand this gosh dang trade war that's going on between the US and China. It doesn't make any sense, but President Trump has come out with a gesture of goodwill delaying tariff increases by another two weeks. There's supposed to be a tariff increase happening on October 1st to raise tariffs from 25% to 30% on a few different goods that uh, we import from China or the US imports from China rather because I'm in South Africa. Uh, but now it's been delayed till October 15th. Whether or not it's ever, ever gonna happen, who knows? I don't. I'll tell you that much. You know what else I don't know is that Fantex was gonna announce this today, which is their neon flexible digital RGB strips in case you want to add some RGB lighting around say a motherboard or around a fan or just kind of outlining your case. They've now come out with their flexible digital LED strips uh, as, as well as finally launching their Shift Air case, which is their mini ITX case that looks really great as a home theater PC, but with its tempered glass may have had more than a few uh, temperature spikes than you would like. So now they have a mesh front that'll allow you to make it look like an actual speaker with a mesh grill. So it's kind of cool. And then also the P360X chassis is officially out as well. All of these, besides the, the flexible digital RGB strip, all of those were announced at Computex, but now they're here, my friends, they're here. And you know what else is here? A $500 million payday for JJ Abrams because his company, Bad Robot, signed an exclusive deal with Warner Media to get that cash cash money. Fantastic. And speaking of TV shows, Witcher series, apparently, might be coming out on December 17th thanks to a leaked Facebook post from Netflix that kind of made it seem like they would be streaming on December 17th because they posted it was 97 days from September 11th. We'll have to see if that's true, but I'm actually kind of excited. And you want to know what nobody is excited for? The Vanta Black BMW X6. Besides people who are just, I mean, it's cool. It's, it's a cool thing. Anyways, uh, while it actually can't be viewed from the naked eye because of its 99.9% .9 light absorption, it's actually found out that if you do use LiDAR on it, you can still see it, which 
makes a whole lot of sense. And then speaking of dark things, Slack, which is a great workspace communication tool, just dropped its dark mode for desktop. So in case you wanna get that dark, you can do it. And let's talk about doing things that you really don't need. And that's a flying fish drone that's propelled by combustion. It can actually explode right on out of the water. You know you want this for flying fish in your pool to attack your guests at a barbecue. It's genius. And then a TV that I don't think I would buy, but I could see Reese picking up. The Frame TV. I actually didn't know this existed. It's been out for a while. Actually, this article is just indicating that it's on sale for $650. But this is the first time I'm seeing it. I don't like it. It's not a type of TV that I would buy. It's very, very, like you need to have the aesthetic for it but in case you want the sale, I guess. And then let's talk about other things I don't want, which is cube-shaped wombat poop, or knowing that uh, in, in males, the left testicle runs hotter than the right testicle. Well, these are scientific discoveries that have been honored at the Ig Nobel Prize givings. Obviously, Ig Nobel is a play on the Nobel Prize, but these are actual scientific discoveries and research that has happened that they're uh, kind of just made in lighthearted gesture where the winners receive a $10 trillion Zimbabwe bill as their prize, which is worth nothing at this point because they did away with the Zimbabwe dollar previously and now they have a new currency, but then they were like, oh, this currency is worthless, so let's use the US dollar. And then the US is like, you can't do that, so you can't like stop it. And then Zimbabwe is looking for another new currency because they can't actually keep the inflow of cash. And it's a complicated thing, my friends. So that's gonna be the end of hot news today. Maybe let's say if you're picking up the Frame TV, you could use our sponsor today privacy.com forward slash UFD, save $5 extra. So that TV is only gonna cost you 640 or potentially pick up a Netflix subscription for the Witcher series. And that way you can make sure that you have a privacy card set to only your Netflix subscription and you'll never pay more than what it is and it'll never be hacked. Or if it is, you're protected, just do it. I'm gonna do the out of here thing, bye. But speaking of RAM, apparently China's, I can't say that, 